What if I told you you could take a paintbrush and dip it into a photograph? What would that be like? Well, I think it would look something like this. Once you understand that you can take a brush and actually use the character of the brush to modify the existing color that you have, it can become a tool you can use to change a photograph into a painted result. In this short video, I'm going to show you three ways you can dip a paintbrush into a photograph with Painter. The first stop on our dip a brush tour is going to be the auto painting panels and you get to those via the window menu. If you go down right here to the auto painting panels, just select underpainting. That will bring up the trio of panels we're going to be working with. And in the underpainting panel itself, all you need to be concerned with right now is right down here in the lower right corner, the auto clone button. I'm going to click it. It's going to make a copy and clean it off. And we'll now move over to the auto painting panel. You want to be sure in the auto painting panel to enable your smart stroke setting. I'm going to go down here and hit the play button. It's going to use one of the Smart Strokes category brushes. It will start with a large size brush and slowly reduce the size of that brush. Okay, the auto painting process is completed. This is by far the simplest method to convert a photograph into a painting. Painter takes control and does the painting work for you. However, you can do some interesting things. It will by default select the Smart Stroke category of brushes and use one of these to begin with. I'm going to introduce you to an interesting little twist here. Let's go ahead and close this up and I'm going to undo this. Let's go to a different category. In this case, I'm going to go to Oils and I'm going to select this Dense Impasto block. If you look over in the color palette, if we click on this button right here, Use Clone Color, this will tell the brush to ignore the current color in the palette and use the source color. Let's go ahead and play this. And now we're getting a completely different look. You're not restricted to just the Smart Stroke category of brushes. You can select any brush in Painter and just turn off its ability to use the palette colors and it will now use the source colors of the imagery that you've selected for cloning. So the idea here is you've got a huge resource of brushes available to you to try out different types of painting techniques. Depending on which brush you select and any modifications you may make to that brush will be included in the way it paints while auto painting. So the first stop in our dip a brush tour is the auto painting panels. This is the easiest, simplest way to get involved in converting a photograph into a painting and it gives you the resources of all of the brushes to try out as a painting brush for your photographs. Here's our finished painting and I'd say not too bad for a fully automated process. The next stop in our dip a brush tour will be to take the brush out of auto painting's hands and put it into our hands. So now we'll be hand painting with a cloning brush. Let's go ahead and go back to our UI. I'm going to go ahead and close this because we're not going to need it anymore. The one thing I am going to do is to delete this image from our clone. I'm going to now go over to another category, the artist brushes, and I'm going to select the impressionist. And once again, we're going to select use clone color in the color palette. Now, I have a brush that paints with the source colors. Let's go ahead and use Command or Control T to enable tracing paper. This lets me now begin to paint with a brush that is using the clone colors and I can see my source imagery via the tracing paper. Let's shut it off for a second. You can see it's using that color but it's letting me apply it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go through the exercise of cloning this with my brush, which I've selected from the artist category and enabled it to be a cloner by selecting Use Clone Color in the color palette. I've now completely gone over my original image by hand using my Impressionist brush, which is set to use Clone Color. What if I want to bring back some detail? I'm going to bring back up my underpainting palette and I'm going to go to the restoration panel and I'm going to select the soft edge brush and what this will let me do is now 
just bring in selected areas some of the original detail of my brush and let it intermix back with my hand applied strokes. Now I can start to combine a little bit of both the photograph as well as the original image and in this case it lets me get some detail back in areas where I want the eye to focus particularly on this boat in the foreground. So our second stop lets me start to hand paint with both brush strokes as well as some of the original photographic detail to get the best of both worlds. Here is our combined hand painted strokes along with the reintroduction of some of the photographic source material to get a balance of both painted and closer detail. This technique now allows me to combine both my hand painted cloned brush strokes along with reintroduction introducing some of the original photographic detail from the source image. The first two stops on our Dip a Brush tour have treated the source image as the color palette, funneling its colors through the brush and depositing them on a clone image. Our third and final stop alternatively treats the image as if it is composed of wet paint perfectly representing the photo. This takes us to a technique I refer to as layer paint. Rather than establishing source and clone images, our brushes are used as expressive blenders that pick up the underlying image colors and apply them to a targeted layer. This technique enables you to build up a painting via a series of layers that isolate varying degrees of finish to the piece. The painting is then saved as a single layered file that is easily edited and modified. The key to this technique is the layer palette's pick up underlying color option. Check this option and you're in business. You'll additionally need to modify your brushes so that they blend rather than apply color. Remember, your brush color is coming from any underlying color it finds and applying it to the above currently selected layer. And that's it. Three techniques for transforming photos into paintings. Use one or all three. Dipping a paintbrush into my photos is definitely my must-have feature in Corel Painter 13.